Dave McIntyre, Alan Quinlan, thank you. So a losing bonus point for Ireland, not that it will be of much consolation right now. An extraordinary second half. Rob Kearney, your overall thoughts? Oh, it's disappointing. They, they played their guts out. You know, it was a, they, were, they came out in that second half and they were behind by 15 points, I think, and they went after them. They got two quick tries. They threw the kitchen sink at this French team and unfortunately it just fell short for them on the day. If you had to boil it down, what was the winning and losing of that game? I think that French pack, the size of them, the power, the physicality of them, they didn't allow Ireland to impose themselves on the game like they were able to do last week. This is a different team that Ireland faced last week. Now, they would have known that they were going to come up against a different team, but I'm not sure they quite expected the ferocity of what was in Paris awaiting them today. Yeah, Matt, Rob's point there, Ireland never imposed themselves really in this game. Well, I, I think, Joe, that I, I, I might say at times they did. Like the, the first 10 minutes of the second half, they, as Robbie said, they came out, and I, that, that was their game plan. They were getting their second passes in, forwards were running before the ball, uh, and, and so on. They... But I'll come back a step. This is not a disaster. I know everyone's hurting out there, but they just took the best team in the world away from home to within an inch of winning. Like There, there are so many pluses, without Sexton, there are so many pluses for Ireland in this game. Now, they'll be hurting, and that means the Grand Slam's out. I get it, and I understand it. But they'll learn from that. And Robbie's, Robbie's point was in the... It, in that beginning of that game, when the physicality came on, they couldn't get their structures that have stood by them so well into place. But the beginning of the second half, they did, and they got results. Two great tries. They were brave, as Robbie said before. Kick for touch, didn't take the three, and they scored a very good mall try. They went toe-to-toe with the heavyweight champion of the world, and they, and, and they lost on points. But they weren't disgraced. Um... They weren't disgraced, but my overall feeling is this is a missed opportunity. For sure. They had that game. It is very difficult to win in Paris. You don't get much better opportunities than they had. Uh, they put themselves in. We, they hung in in the first half when they had to. We knew there was going to be a massive uh, physical presence from France. That was the case. They hung in. They weathered it. They came back. They put themselves in a position to win that game. And ultimately... Um, it was their own mistakes that meant that they didn't get over the line for that and they will, will rue it and just one point and, and I know the guys may disagree be, with me on this but there was the opportunity to go for the um, for the corner with that penalty uh, to, instead they kicked the penalty went to just three behind but the momentum at that point was with Ireland they'd already scored from um, a rolling mall uh, France were looking shaky they didn't take it they never got another opportunity it's, it's, it's always tough on a skipper, isn't it? Uh, Ryan went for touch early on. They mauled, got a try. Robbie and I were both saying, take the three. I know you said go, go for the corner and it turned out the points weren't there. But it, it, even if we take that decision away, it was the inaccuracy of Ireland in that, it, at the vast majority of that game, their inaccuracy that cost them. Mm. And a lot of that was forced by the power of the French defence coming at them, the, the uh, ferocity of the rucking, the collisions, the defence, and that, in the end, you can't go away from home and make that many errors uh, uh, and Matt, get a win. But, Matt, that wasn't Fr France's best display or no. anything like it. That was I agree. Great, you know, they, they were at home. Yes, they were physically intimidating. Um, their, either, their 10 didn't play particularly well. Dupont didn't have one of his best games, although he scored um, a, a great try and a, a sort of talismanic try. But, you know, they put a lot of ball down. Um, their line-out was a little bit shaky, especially their, their, uh, their attacking line-out. Mm. So we didn't get France on their best day. And, and we'll rue it. We'll rue the, the chance because maybe that is the grand slam. I'm, I'm not sure. Ireland were the, were the better team there for a large part of that second half. Yeah. You know, there was sure. times there when you were looking, particularly with 15 minutes to go, the French were getting tired, they were getting lazier, they were starting to become a little bit more ill-disciplined. Mm. That's why I thought the decision to go for goal was actually a good one because I thought that they go back up the field and they get another opportunity due to poor discipline from the French. OK, we'll go over to Paris for some uh, reaction. Tommy Martin standing by with Joey Carberry. Joey, what an extraordinary game and obviously deep disappointment, I'd imagine, to come out on the losing side of it. Give us your initial reaction. Yeah, I'm absolutely gutted. Um, I feel like we probably didn't start quick enough and let them into the game too quick. They kicked their goals, they played really well, they took their chances, so... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to recoup and uh, look back on it. Was this a game in which, certainly in that first half, the French imposed their physicality on Ireland? Yeah, I think so. We, we knew that from the start. 
they're extremely physical and um, they probably sucked us in and then got us on the outside a few times. So, um, but yeah, look, credit to them, they played really well. Is that disappointing because it's something that you knew they would bring? Uh, I think it's disappointing whenever we lose. Uh, to be honest, like, we're absolutely gutted, but look, there was huge positives we can still take from that. We fought back really well. And the, the belief in this team is there. Um, so, look, we'll learn from this and get better. How proud of you, are you um, as a team of that fight back in the second half? Because it looked like you just simply cut loose and went for it after, after half time. Yeah, massively. Um, we know how good this team can be. Um, we just need to believe in ourselves. And we, cut, we showed bits of it if we could have done it for the whole thing. Uh, but I, I'm so proud of the team and so proud to be part of this team. Uh, incredibly honoured. You are a developing team. Will a night like tonight be a big learning experience for you going forward? Yeah, massively. Massively. That was my first start in Six Nations. A loud, a loud place to come and uh, against a really strong team. So look back on it, learn from it. But uh, yeah, extremely gutted with the result. Was there a decision to be made there um, in the 71st, 72nd minute about whether to go for the corner or to go for goal? What was the thinking there? The thinking was we got it back to three points. Um, we score a try and we get a shot at goal and we bring it up, so uh, I think it was a completely right call at the time. Um, a few things then didn't go our way afterwards, and look, that's just it. it, it, it rugby can swing in different ways sometimes, but uh, yeah, I don't think we did the wrong thing. Just finally, Joey, on a personal level, it is your first Six Nations start. Um, after all the injuries you've been through, it wasn't a winning start, but how nice uh, an experience uh, was it for you to finally get that uh, experience tonight? Yeah, it means so much to me. Um, Obviously, been involved in this environment for a while, and to be, get my first start, uh, incredibly proud day for me and my family. Um, loved it out there, loved being with the guys around me. They're some of my best mates, so yeah, look, love being in this team, and uh, we believe in ourselves. Yeah, and two weeks' time against Italy, championship is still there for you, I guess. Massively. Um, we just need to take our learnings from today and improve every day, and go and try and do our best in the next few games and see where it brings us. Okay, thanks, Joey. Thank you. Lovely. Shane Horgan, Joey Carberry kicked beautifully. That lovely languid style did not let him down on a big night. What about his general performance tonight? You're right, Joey. He kicked like a dream, kept Ireland in touch. And you know, there were some of them were, were tricky kicks as well. Um, he looked like a guy who hadn't played a lot at this level. Now, a few other guys struggled with that as well today. And it is an elite level. It's something that you don't come across very often. And it's difficult to manage. And we saw that, was, that reflected in... Uh, Ireland's difficulty with being able to impose their game plan and individual skills as well. That happened you know, yeah. almost right across the board, especially in that uh, first uh, half. Understandable. They're playing a great side, so let's not take that away. I thought you know, he looked a little bit undercooked, which is entirely sort of reasonable. A little bit slow in decision-making, a little bit lateral, um, but it was a very, very difficult environment to come into. Yeah, I, I thought he got a bit better later in the game, yeah. Shane. Like in the second half, I thought he, he, he got himself into it a little bit more, but totally understandable that he'd be a step behind with the, with the six months that he's had. Yeah, OK. So, in a sense, tonight, I mean, if you take the English performance last year and then the brilliant November series and the New Zealand win and then last week's performance had a kind of training ground feel to it by comparison with that, what have we learned about this new Irish game plan under Farrell tonight, then? I think the most important thing we've learned is that Ireland have a rugby team without Johnny Sexton, which is a big plus. You know, Joey Carberry got in there... Okay, we didn't win on the, on the day, but it was a good Ireland performance and they could have snatched that very easily from the death. So I think that's a big positive. They will learn a huge amount from that. There's guys there who have never played in front of 80,000 people before, away from home. Mm. That's a big challenge as well. And that brings its own pressures and its own things to have to deal with on the big occasion. Yeah. So they will learn a huge amount from that. I sense you're less charitable about this. No, I... Um, I think they did really well to get to the, into the position that they were. I just, you know, I'm, I'm feeling for the players, mm. really, because I think you don't get, you know, I went to, uh, to France many times and lost many times, and it's very difficult to win there. And you get, it's so rare you get the opportunity. And I felt they got the opportunity because they put themselves in, in that position to win the game. Mm. Now, um, and we did see some, I think, some um, poor errors towards the end of the game when they were dominant for large periods of that second half. So it, it, it's less 
Um, it's just uh, the, the loss of the opportunity to be France. It doesn't come around very often okay. and they'll be sick. And they'll be, they'll be sick in the changing rooms. And Matt, you know those periods where it seems like every time Ireland go into contact or into a breakdown, it's either very slow or the French are even turning the ball over. So that was the first time this game plan's really experienced that. Yeah, and the France, obviously, we said it before the game, France targeted it and France did it really well. You've got to give... You know, we, well, we're talking about the, the, the Irish team. We've got to say who you're playing against. Mm. Wales, you know, we, we did just they didn't provide the opposition. As Shane said, it was a post training. They were very, very poor at the. This is a very physical side, very big men, mm. very powerful men. You know, and, and, and not even the big men. You know, you, you saw uh, uh, Villiers there, the, the, the tiny little fella, the same size as Chisel and Colby, and the man is so strong. Yeah. You know, and, and at the breakdown, they were going in, going in. They would carry forward in defence. They were, they were, the French were throwing themselves at him. Here's the good thing. The Irish boys kept getting up, going again, getting mm. up, going again, getting up, going again. And then for a 20-minute period, they got on top. Now, this was the game I felt all year we'd lose. But I can tell you, this isn't a disaster because they're going to learn, as Robbie said, when you go to Eden Park in Auckland in June and it's full of 70, 65,000 Kiwis, that's double what you're going to get here. Mm. Like, that is the ultimate tough joint. And these guys have got to learn these things and that's part of it today. And we did see a little bit of backslide from the game plan that we've seen in the last six months and that was understandable maybe when that pressure comes on. So... The next phase of this development, and it's not going to be against Italy in two weeks' time because you know they can play any way with any players and they'll smash Italy, I think. Mm. It's um, you know, putting themselves under the pressure in the very, very elite games. And there's not... Yeah. You know, the super elite teams yes. are France now. You know, England at their best. Um, you know, um, New Zealand, South Africa. Um, they'll have a tough game against Scotland, yes, but they should win that as well. So, saying so at the super elite level, can your skills and your physicality match the very best teams? And does your game plan, can your game plan um, live up to it? And can you implement your game plan? And, because and if you can't, you've got to do something else. Well, and at the moment, what's the answer to those questions? Well, it's, it's not yet. Not yet. Not quite yeah. yet. Yeah. I think that the super elite level is also the super big and super strong teams. Not and true. that's going to be a big challenge yeah. of this Irish pack. And it's always going to be a challenge we have as Irish people, just coming up against bigger packs. Yeah. What they need to do is be better at moving the point of contact yeah. okay. and getting the bigger forwards running around chasing shadows. We still saw a few too many one-out runners going straight up the guts. That doesn't work against big teams. And because Joe, uh, during the last couple of years, that was the complaint, that it was one-off runners and we're not a big team, so we'll get pushed back. And then the hope was, in the, in the, in the current guys, well, we're moving the ball much better. But tonight, we maybe slip back a touch. Because the ruck ball's a little bit slower. And I keep coming back, keep harbouring back yeah. on this ruck point. When the ruck ball is slower, it is harder to create play. Okay. And, then, and then there was an anxiety in our type of play. Because we saw we did start running into the area straight outside the, the ruck, something that we haven't seen in six months, really, uh, when it's not on. We did see some of the passing that was you know, a little bit inside shoulder or the second wave was too, too flat and overran the pass. You know, what we need to be able to, to... And it's hard to practice this because it's hard to recreate a team like France. It's hard to do that. Even the rest of the Six Nations, we might not come up against play that good. But we have to be able to deliver the game plan and our skills against the very, very best. And, and that's where Twickenham comes in. Because that's the game I believe Ireland can win. OK. So, so if, if they take their learnings from this, go to Twickers and jam it to Eddie Jones and, and the people in the white jersey, and they're capable of doing that. Let's uh, go back to Paris for some more reaction. Uh, the captain for the evening, James Ryan. There's a huge amount of positives to be taken despite the result. Yeah, we're disappointed that we're now uh, with that now. Very disappointed. Um, I thought we, you know, we started the game poorly. Uh, we were a bit frantic at times. You know, particularly when you go away to France, you need to start well. Uh, that probably gave them a bit of momentum in the first half. Uh, and um, I thought we showed you know, some grit in the second half and we started to impose our game on them, but, um, you know, I suppose we ended up chasing the game a bit. Do you think discipline potentially cost you a bit in key areas of the field? Yeah, I think discipline um, it cost us definitely and some handling errors at important times as well that, that gave them entries into the game. Um, so, as I said, they're, they're areas that you just can't give France um, access. The tournament's not over and you've got a week off now. What areas of the game are you going to specifically work on before the next fixture? As I said, like, look, we, we started the game poorly with some of our handling errors, so we'll have to have a look at that. Um, and, and, and as you said, discipline as well uh, gave, gave France access into the game, so there are two areas we'll have to 
We'll have to look at. Commiserations, safe trip home. Thank you.